it's not every day that we have a beer from Germany, a craft beer from Germany. This is Russell Russell's Teapot, and it is from German brewery, wait for the pronunciation, Atella Vral. But what's it going to be like? Keep watching to find out. Welcome back to Rocker's Beer Review. We're going German craft beer. I can't think of many craft beer breweries from Germany. Certainly not huge amounts on the channel. I mean, when you talk about German beer, you're talking about your Oktoberfest, your lagers, your, you know, those sort of beers. But this is a, a New England IPA. Surprise, surprise. It's called Russell's Teapot. It's in English. We've got this sort of weird photo of someone diving into a paddling pool indoors. It's got Mosaic, Cascade and HBC, let me look at the number, 630, one of those new experimental hops. Uh, and as I say, it's from the brewery. I'm going to put my glasses on again here because I really struggled to, to read it the first time. Um, Atella, and it's V-R-A-I, I think Vral, Atella Vral. So they're from Germany. I don't know where in Germany they're from. We'll have a quick look on the back. Hamburg, by the looks of things. So these are from Hamburg. Ever heard of them? Let me know in the comments. But let's crack it open, get it in a glass, and see what these German craft beer brewers are all about. I think it's a what what interested me of this is just a weird selection of hops. Obviously, a brewery I haven't had before, and I want to try and new breweries as much as possible. And of course, the old recommendation from uh, from Frost Bottle Shop. So. Beer in a glass, well, it's a weird sort of pour, really, because we've got three fingers, and it's like it's like Hubble Bubble there. There's like loads of bubbles in there. Look at this. Look at that. It's a bit of a weird sort of head, really, on a, on a beer. Beer itself, lovely colour, orange, golden, caramac sort of colour, but there's loads of carbonation there sticking to the glass. Huge amount. So that is one of those sort of beers that's... I always find these beers that, you know, where they've come further... You know, they don't maybe they don't travel so well and they sort of see a bit shake get a bit shaken up and, and that's why they look a bit weird but once that settles i mean pretty good because the color is really beautiful so let's see what the aroma's like lots of sort of tropical mango passion fruit yeah it smells really juicy and really inviting but it's difficult to really pick out one thing over the other. Did I say it's got, yeah, it's got mosaic. You can see, you can tell it's a mosaic heavy. It's got that sort of tropicalness, that slightly sort of berry, bubbly gum sort of uh, aroma, but it smells inviting and I want to drink it. So here goes. Cheers, everyone. Oh, there's a strange little twang there on the back end. Hmm. Body is, is sort of medium. It's quite sort of, it's got a slight gloopiness to it. A slight, I wouldn't call it velvety, but it's medium bodied, I'd say. Low levels of carbonation. All that carbonation that will stick to the glass, you don't really get much of that sort of fizz in the mouth. It's very smooth. I mean, it's very mosaic heavy. I mean, it, it's almost it's almost mosaic single hop in terms of, you know, when I've had stuff with just mosaic in it, it's, it's it's had this sort of flavour to it. So you're getting a lot of mango, a bit of passion fruit. It's all about the stone fruits, really. As I said, there was a bit of a, a bit of a strange twang to it, which I can't really I cannot really describe at all. It's just a a strange twang. It's like a, almost like a weedy sort of dankness on the back end, really. I mean HBC 630, I'm sure I've had that before, and I'm sure that's another one of those sort of berry, strawberry, those sort of flavours. Not really sure getting that. It's almost like sort of like a, it's almost like it's got something a bit like hawthorns or some some sort of green, almost not quite go, close to being vegetable sort of like, but not quite. Herby, I suppose you may, you may call it. I'm getting a little, quite a bit of, it's just weird that taste, I never got it before, in that mouthful, I'm getting quite a sharp grapefruit sort of flavour, it's quite nice, there's lots, there's lots going on with this beer, but to me, 
mosaic heavies if you like mosaic hops i'm not a massive fan i think they work well with other cops but on their own i always find they're a little bit too i don't know again i think the mosaic brings a lot of that weedy dankness and and, and sort of tropical stone fruits and sometimes it can go a little bit too weedy or dank really but it's smooth it's fruity as i say that that fruitiness isn't bright, isn't light, citrusy, fresh. It's it's dank and weedy in terms of those flavours. And I know a lot of people love that flavour. You know, they they go mad for that sort of flavour. And I think I think that's what you, you get. You get quite a lot of enjoyment from this. So it's a good, well made beer because it's certainly got lots of. It's got a nice medium body to it. It's smooth. It's got a nice soft mouth feel. Um, Flavour wise, though, it's it's got that it's got a very dry bitterness. It's that oh, it's a Germanness about it, I reckon, because like again, it's drying your mouth out, almost like you know, like a German pilsner. Um, and there's lots of that real. It's a real dank, sweaty, fruited, flavoured beer. And as I said, I think a lot of people really like that. I'm not a massive fan, but it's it's not bad. It's it's pretty good. It's drinkable. Yeah, it's a good beer. So, Russell's Teapot. Let's get some scores. Okay, the scores are in for Russell's Teapot. Strange sort of named beer with someone diving into a paddling pool, which is just as strange. I have no idea what that is. Mosaic Cascade HBC 630. I didn't actually say what the ABV of it is because it's not very clear. Oh, it's 7.3%. Well, that, ugh, that probably accounts for that sort of weedy dankness, really. I think the, strong, the stronger an ABV is you get those sort of flavours. I think it was closer to the 6. It would be a little bit brighter. I never realised it was 7.3. And I so say this is from Etella Vra, which is probably completely the wrong pronunciation, but that's as best as I'm going to get it, I think. So, seven scores, starting with aroma. Appearance. Flavour. Value for money. And my overall experience. So, you tighten the scores up. Yeah, it's a, it's recommended. It's a mid recommended beer, you know, and it's it's halfway between highly recommended and just not recommended. If that makes sense, you know, it's seventy five. You know, that's what it is. It's seventy five. It's a white snake beer. Slide it in slow and easy. If you like your sweaty, fruited dankness in beers, you'll love it. I think you'll really love it. If you like mosaic hop, you'll really love it. If you want something brighter, lighter. If you want more you know lemons and limes and grapefruit citrus i mean there is grapefruit flavors in this but it's quite sweaty and dank then then i'd, I'd say look elsewhere but it's a good beer and it's gonna make it's making me thinking yeah i might if i see any more from these i'll give them a try see see what else they can do it i think it's about the hops and about what they're trying to achieve here 7.4 percent i mean that's pretty much close to a double IPA. It's got a good mouthfeel as well. But let me know if you've had any German craft beer before. And let me know in the comments what you think. Hopefully that will be not the first and the, or the, and the last, I should say, of the uh, of German craft beer. We'll, we'll, we should check out more new stuff. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm whittling on. So I'll leave it till now. And until the next one, you know what you do. Drink good craft beer and keep on rocking.